I am so excited to announce that iDriver Classic is now sponsored by Adrian Flux, one of the UK's leading classic car insurers. If you're looking for classic car insurance, I've popped a link to Adrian Flux in the description box below. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic, or should I say Salut, because we're back with something French, and it's not just any French car, we have got the Citroen Visa. I have never seen one of these outside of a car show, so when the owner contacted me and said, do you want to drive my Citroen Visa? I thought, of course I do, I will be there as quickly as I can, because Citroen are awesome. So back in the day, Citroen really tested what it meant to experience motoring and what motoring really meant. And the Visa is no exception. So if you think it looks interesting from the outside, just wait till we get inside. But first of all, I'm just going to take you for a quick walk around and show you this fantastic car. Once one of France's most popular exports of the 1980s, the Citroen Visa is a car which is so rarely spotted that it makes my Morris Marina look commonplace. Now like all good things, the Visa wasn't something which was dreamt up overnight. So way back in 1965, Robert Oprom began his work on a prototype to replace the 2CV, which had an intended launch date of 1970. For many reasons, this didn't come to fruition, but it did lead to the Citroen Prototype Y, which was developed in conjunction with Fiat to replace the Citroen ME. Again, this didn't come to an immediate result for Citroen, but when Peugeot acquired Citroen in 1974, the project was rebooted and named Citroen VD, which incorporated the floor pan of the Peugeot 104, making it then possible to use the 104 engine and transmission units. And with this, the five-door 104-based Citroen Visa was launched, which of course replaced the earlier idea of the prototype Y. Although really interestingly, the original design from the Y was sold to the Altsit Club. So if you'd like to see one in more detail or get your head around what they look like, get yourself over to Hubnut because Ian has taken one on and uh, he's currently doing it up and very ambitious, but it's a really interesting series of videos to watch after you've watched this one. Now going back to the Visa, the example we're testing here today is a Mark II or second generation, although you'll notice that it does sport the Mark I dash. Now this was correct because it was sold with this and it's not something that's been fitted later on. Now when the Mark II, as we're testing here today, came to market, it was sold as being a much more polished version of the earlier Visa which had come before it. It boasted development of the 1124cc four-cylinder engine with overhead camshaft and also had the transistorized ignition which then meant that the fuel economy for the time was nothing to be sniffed at. So the Visa boasted an incredible 44.8 mpg when driven at 75 miles per hour and 58.9 when driven at 56 miles per hour. The car was said to have a top speed of 87 miles per hour, caveat we're not taking it that fast today, with the ability to do it just under 400 miles on one tank of fuel. And if you're wondering why the numbers seem a bit odd, it's because it was all originally done in kilometres, because of course this is a French car. Now the Visa was marketed as a roomy five-door hatchback, comfortable enough for family, but also had 10 cubic feet of boot space and a massive 24 feet of cubic space with the back seats folded down. It, so it didn't just sell on being comfortable and having that family appeal, but it was also practical too. Now, as I'll tell you when we go driving, the seating position gives you real confidence as the driver because there is nothing like good visibility. And it also has a turning circle of 31 feet. So it's pretty easy to maneuver about too. Now, I realize for some people, the styling and shape of this car may look a little out of the ordinary, but Citroen stated that the car had been designed with aerodynamics in mind. The design took into account headspace, hip swivel and body movement and was said when discussing total drag to be the best car in its class. And in fact, it's the aerodynamics which gave this car an enviable, enviable top speed and lower fuel demand. Although when you see when we go for a drive, 
the top speed is good but unless you get a bit of a run up on those hills it is a wee bit sluggish now a head and body room wasn't the only comfort consideration the car has been designed with fully independent suspension and anti-roll bars to front and rear which gives it a really soft ride and it is something that i do talk about when we go out for a drive but guess what Citroen didn't stop there. They also paid real attention to the comfort and safety aspects of owning a visa. We've got the satellite pod control, which you've probably spotted as we've looked around the inside, and I'm gonna demonstrate later on in the video. In addition to a generous seven air vent set up for heating, a two speed blower with demister function, and a heated rear screen. I mean, what more can you ask for? Now, another interesting feature, which I wasn't made aware of, but we discovered when we found the cameraman locked in the rear of the car with no means to escape, is that the car is fitted with child safety catches. And as you'll see on this walk around, the reflectors that you've probably have spotted on the driver's doors are applied to all the doors as a warning to other drivers that the door is open. Now, you might think that this car has been very well equipped, well, guess what? Citroen did too. And in fact, when they went out, they sold the car as offering unbeatable value with its standard equipment package. And they even challenged prospective buyers to find the same level of spec for the same money elsewhere. Although if you did want extras, you could have chosen metallic paint and sunroof because you'd pay extra for those. Now, the Citroen Visa was made from 1978 all the way through to 1988 and the Citroen AX replaced this and in fact we've got the Citroen AX in an upcoming video but first of all I wanted to have a chat with the owner because a lot of people look at this car and be frightened to take it on it's very different to what we all know but the chat that I spoke to started off weirdly with an AX and came over to the Visa so I thought I'd catch up with him and find out exactly why he picked this fantastic and possibly one of the most brilliant cars we've ever featured on iDriver Classic. Hi I'm Colin, um, this is my Citroen Visa L. Um, I'm a bit of a Citroen fanatic, um, I've been around Citroens all my life. Um, I grew up with Citroens because my dad um, repaired them for a living. Um, and also my brother had owned a Citroen as well um, so always been close to my heart and I've always been involved with the Citroen car club etc. Um, I had the chance to buy this car um, earlier this year um, from a friend of mine. Um, it's quite an interesting car because it's got the, um, the Mark II exterior and the Mark I dashboard. Um, it's all very blue inside as you'll see from the video um, and on the outside, um, but I, I love its sort of retro look. Um, I didn't plan on buying a Visa, um, it was a friend of mine who, who was selling it. Um, he lost his car storage and he had to sell a number of his cars and he wanted to make sure it went to a good home. Um, so I, I bought it off him because um, he asked me to really. Um, because I'd restored one of his other cars um, last year, um, a Citroen AX. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting really because the car had been stood for um, almost 20 years. Um, an older couple had it, I believe, um, and they passed away. Um, their children rented their house out, left it in their garage. Um, and when it came to sell the house a few years later, um, I understand that the, the children scrapped the car um, and being a 24,000 mile car from new and quite a nice car, that was a real shame. Um, luckily someone in the uh, Citroen car club was driving past his local scrapyard and saw this car um, stacked up four high um, and he was told that it was going to be crushed in the next half an hour unless he got it down. Um, so he managed to, to get it down and he saved it and stored it for a, a few more years um, before my friend then bought it with a plan to getting it back on the road again. Um, unfortunately, my friend didn't get the time to put it back on the road, um, but I have managed to do this in the last um, year. Um, luckily, there wasn't a lot of damage to the car um, from being in the scrapyard. It did have a dented roof, which I had to repair 
um, and a dent specialist helped me with that. Um, and there were some scrapes um, all around the car really. Um, and whilst I tried to be sympathetic to its originality, it did end up having a full respray in the end because I just couldn't get the paintwork to match um, properly, which was a shame. Um, but actually, I think in the end, it's turned out much nicer for doing it. The, the major problem when I bought this car wasn't actually the bodywork though, it was the engine. Um, because the engine had been stood for so many years, um, the previous owner told me that it was low on compression on one cylinder. Um, and also, um, it was a very noisy engine. Um, so my dad, having been a Citroen specialist for years, has rebuilt the engine um, fully. Um, and he found that there was um, a burnt out valve in the cylinder head, which was causing the low compression. Um, and the oil pump um, was not working properly, which was causing low oil pressure, um, which was resulting in a noisy engine. Um, so. Luckily, the engine was quite easily fixable. Now, when I saw the outside of this car, I couldn't wait to bring you inside because I knew, I just knew that being a Citroen and a Citroen of this age, that we were going to get a really interesting driving experience. And first of all, let's talk about how blue it is. So you thought it was blue when we took out that Vauxhall a few months ago and we took out the Bluebird last year. Well, guess what? This is like all of that combined times a million from all the controls in front of me and all the dash and the doors right through to the ceiling with that almost Laura Ashley-esque picnic blanket roof lining. I actually, I'm blown away and to say that this car was designed in the era that people say taste forgot I just think this is amazing. What are you talking about? Find me a modern car that's this exciting that's an everyday car. You will not because this is incredible. I mean, just everything about it. I feel like I'm almost in some otherworldly experience of motoring. And that's something that Citroen do so well that when they talk, when they sit down and they design a car, especially in this era, I feel like they've really thought about what the driver's going to do, anticipating their next move. And it leads to a control panel a little bit like this. But first of all, I thought I'd give you a quick whistle stop tour around the rest of it. So from the far left, we've got where a glove box should be. We've got a shelf there. I would have preferred a glove box, but look, I'm not here to quibble. And into the centre there, you've got an ashtray. You've got this control here with a man in a cowboy hat down to a Cuban stacked heel. And that represents where the heat is going to be going. But look, basic science tells us that heat rises. So... Guess what? We're going to have it on our feet. So set that before we go because it's quite chilly today. Now, just below that, we've got our radio. That's for medium and long wave. Now, that's kind of everything we've got over here. It's very basic over here. But when we get in front of us, this is where this car starts to shine. So to our left hand side here, and just for reference, this is probably for sizing perspective for you guys at home this is probably about the size of a normal can of coke and on it the idea was that citroen had was that when you were a driver you had all the controls you needed without taking your hands off the steering wheel now on this we seem to have pretty much everything that you would hope to have so at the top you've got your washer there you've got two speed wipers you've got your indicators You've got your lights, so if you switch that round, you can see there that even, like, look, and there we go. Just, it's very, very clever. At first glance, I was really intimidated, but as you get into it, it you start to think, well, why have more manufacturers not experimented with this idea? Now, on the side of that, and I think this is where you'd have to really learn and you'd have to get a real feel for it as you drove it. So, of course, you've got indicators here, but just behind that, you've got your horn morning and then kind of everything in front of us apart from that is as you kind of expect really so you've got your choke down here i've got a blanking plug above that and as you can see we've got a selection of warning lights now the one that i found really interesting and they're all pretty standard is the one in the middle this so when you press it if the light comes on your brakes are working now if the light doesn't come on that's meant to be an indication that your brakes don't work. Can you imagine how many potential accidents have been avoided 
if people have used that feature correctly. That's that's really clever. Like really, really clever. And then as you can see over here, this uh, this control over here just is for the heater. So again, it's just a case of how hot it is and the, the speed of it. So pretty straightforward. And then you might be able to hear that noise. Do you want to know what that noise is? It's the clock. So I got into it and I was like, what is that noise? What is that noise? And then I looked down at the clock and thought, that surely cannot be the noise. Well, guess what? It is. Um, you get used to it. So if you're watching this video at home, I hope that you can hear it. But if you can't, um, at first it's really off-putting and I was really struggling to think whilst I was doing the video. Um, but as you sit into it, you kind of get more into it. You just, I don't know, it just becomes a background noise. Now our two dials in front of us are very, very basic. We have got to the left hand side, we've got our clock and to the right hand side, we have got our speedo. And in the center of that, you've just got your petrol gauge. So it's, it doesn't feel basic, but I guess the bare bones of it are quite basic. But for me, you've just really got everything you need there. And it's going to be an interesting test drive today because you take out other cars and it can feel very similar to what you're used to. Whereas I think this is probably going to be really different. Um, I'm looking forward to it, actually. It's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a weird one, I can already tell. So we come up into first, down into second. This is a really nice gearbox, actually. Really smooth. You know, you can come out and stuff in this era. And it's, there you go, so reverses off camera there. Now, sometimes you come out and stuff in this era and it is just a bit clunky and a bit rubbish, but that's that's really nice. Um, let's get it started up because I want to want to show you how she sounds. So it's a 1.1 that we're playing with. Right, we're going to get her started up. So, oh good, we've got lots of petrol. Now, I know that this car's had some sound deadening put into it, so it's probably not as loud as it might have originally been but as you can probably hear it's not that loud at all and the plastic isn't rattling so we might actually get quite a quite a pleasurable drive now i'm going to shoot from the back as well so you can hear what she sounds like from behind and then we're going to take a drive and we'll go up through that gearbox <laughs> Okay, so we are going to set off and we'll go up into fourth gear so you can hear what she sounds like. So we've come up into fourth gear and um, one of my criticisms was actually going to be that the heater is absolutely appalling because I couldn't get it to work. But as soon as we set off, it almost sparked into life and it's now becoming quite toasty in here, which uh, is quite advantageous because it's very chilly outside and it's really taken the chill off. Now, as you've also probably noticed as we drive along, we now cannot hear that clock because the noise inside the cabin is actually very loud. Now Colin was telling me before he'd taken it out that he's put sound deadening through the car. Um, but dis despite all that, it is still very, very noisy. But you know what? It doesn't take away from the driving experience. Now I was worried that with it being quite bright and jolly and it almost feeling what some people would deem lazy people that don't think about their wording would deem a bit gimmicky in front of you I thought that perhaps the driving experience might have let it down but actually it's really really good fun um, I really had to second guess myself as I came out of that turning earlier because I went to reach for a stall because I was going to put the indicators on and then I was like hold on no it's one of the buttons and before I knew it I was like flailing round round here trying to find it but look that's just a case of when you get into a new car, you never know where anything is. Although I tell you what, it would be weird going from something like this 
to the AX, which of course is what replaced this um, in 1986. Now I've never taken out a Citroen that I'm disappointed with. Every Citroen I've taken out, I've found something that I really love about it. Even the ones that I wasn't expecting to like, like the BX, I got into them, I started driving and I just fell in love with them. So perhaps I need to stop looking at so much BL stuff online and start looking at Citroen because the stuff that I test is always so interesting and so enjoyable to drive. Now, one of the most enjoyable things on this is the suspension is really soft. So it's fully independent suspension on this, but it doesn't have that, you know, with some of the setups, you get a bit of body roll. With this, you're not getting that. It's still feeling like it's very much there with you. And the driving position as well is really just, I don't know, it makes it really enjoyable. I've got good visibility. My positioning and where I am in the car is nice. Now we're gonna be showing an AX on the channel soon. And you'll see what I mean, because when I took that out, it threw me a little bit because the pedals were off to one side. But with this, I just haven't had that problem. Now with that being a 1.1, it is, as you can see here, as we take it up a hill, it's kind of a little bit slower than what I'm used to, but you know what? It doesn't take away from any of the charm of driving or owning one of these. And I don't think I was the only one won over by these because of course, this was France's most popular exported car in 1982, which makes it thoroughly bizarre that I just haven't seen any of these. Well, I don't, do you know, I have not seen another visa since one of the NEC shows. I don't think I've even seen one at a car show in recent times. And it, more's the pity because the driving experience in this really beats some of the other 70s stuff that we've taken out. And I know that this is a low mileage example, so it's still on 20, well, it's just gone over 24,000. Um, but it feels so together for a 70s car. Some of the 70s stuff you take out, the steering is all over the place and the handling is like just nuts. Whereas look, even just a little movement of that steering wheel, we get a positive response straight away. There's nothing that I dislike about this car. I mean, if I had to work on it, the way that engine's positioned, if I had to work on it, I would hate it with a passion, I think. But driving it, it's really, really nice. And in fact, we should probably talk about that. So the way that the engine's positioned under the bonnet is positioned, so it's on its side, as you can see, it's positioned like that because what they thought was, was because the boot on this isn't the biggest in the world, they thought, well, if we put the spare wheel under the, uh, under the bonnet, we give the owners of the car more room in the boot to fit all their essentials. I mean, it is loud in the cabin, and to say that, you know, it's had sound deadening put into it, it's still very loud. Um, but look, if you're like me and you drive a 70s car every day, it's really not that much to bear. It's louder than the Marina, I know that, but it's it's probably on par with the Morris Minor. So I would have expected it to be quieter, but I can put up with it because it's what I'm used to. Um, I think if it, in terms of, you know, having a conversation, I wouldn't fancy my chances that like, on a motorway on a long journey, I think it would probably do your head in a little bit because it is, it is quite noisy. What I love about old cars, and many of you will know, is that when you get into an old car from a certain era, you know exactly what that car is just by looking at a dash or just a little bit of trim. And this is one of those cars. This is so much more than I expected it to be when I looked at the pictures. And of all the cars I've taken out this year, I am gonna put my hands up and say, and I've got other test drives booked for the rest of this year, so God help me if I get this wrong, but I can put my hands up and say, this is my favorite car that I've put on a driver classic this year. And uh, if they weren't so rare and that engine wasn't on its side, and I know that it would stress me out, um, I would probably get one myself because honestly, if you're not frightened of a challenge and you fancy a slightly rare car yourself, get looking at a Citroen Visa. They are cool from the outside, cool inside, and potentially one of the easiest cars that I've taken out to drive. So that's the end of the video. Um, strange times at the moment, as we all know. I hope wherever you are in the world that you're okay, you're safe, and uh, you're just uh, putting yourself first at the moment because it's a bit of an odd time. So until next Sunday, when we see each other again, 
Take care and drive safely. Thank <laughs> you.